the two guys that they bet big on in the forward group have been two of their worst forwards, and that's Huberto and Kadri. And people are going to say, oh, that goal counted, he's a point per game. Watch. He's a turnover machine. He's awful defensively. It's not he's impactful. Soft. Yeah, no, not he's a- not a game breaker at all. And it's like not even the power play can run through him effectively. Uh, they went one for 19 on the man advantage on the road trip. Like any sort of like, and we'll get Frank on at some point because he was buying the, the bounce back big and it's early. But if you just look at the points, you're like, oh, look, he's back. No, he ain't. He's the same unimpactful player that you've assigned way too much cap to for this year plus seven more. Jack, can you bring up, and before you play it, I just want, if you can bring up this, because uh, we have the second to bring it goal from yesterday, the one that made it, it was their fourth goal of the game. But before you play it, if you can just bring it up so we can establish who is on the ice here. Um, and they did this a lot. This was not turnovers. It was turnovers at different parts of the trip. It was just either transition off turnovers or just them rushing the puck with skill and speed. So let it go for a little bit there. I'm Howie Meeker here. Let it go a little bit here. Now you can see there's Huberto behind. It. So Huberto's just out of the screen, I believe here. It's a stick you're seeing. There he is. Yeah. So this is Huberto just about at the top of the circles, I believe here. So let it, you can let it go. For those of you not listening. Yeah, playing, I know it's playing it's in the offensive zone. Zone. Anyway, so here comes Huberto. He's in the middle of your screen, and then he's right beside Debrinket. But what is he doing? Watching. Yeah, he doesn't pick his man. He seems to think there's spectator. three of us already. I don't need to back check. So now that we've all seen it, just if you can play it one more time, it, you teach your kids that, Rhett. <laughs> Look sure at him. Do. He's at center ice, and he hasn't taken, he does not take a stride. He's no, re- pause it there. Hang on. Is he thinking there's three guys closer to my net than me already? I'm the fourth man back. And none of these are my responsibility. Or is that just a cop out because you're close to that guy in the left wing? It's lazy and not committed to winning. I'd agree with that. Yeah. No strides. Still hasn't taken. He didn't a even look. He stared at the puck the whole time. He didn't like. From center ice, he stopped skating. Where's the last stride? Now, where is it? Blue right there. Line. The front Before- of the logo. That's this is a ten million dollar player. I mean, no. Take take that away. <laughs> yes. This is one of your top. This is a veteran, and I I, I said it yesterday. I don't want to. Well, I'm, I, I'm trying to be fair. But, and then he turned the puck over on the third goal that the Brinkets. He turns it over all night. You, He's you, a turnover you, machine. Listen, different guys are held to different standards for different areas of the ice. Let's say you can only be allowed to play that way if you're outstanding. Yeah. on the power play and a threat to score every time you're on the ice. Dry Seidel can do that, and he has for many seasons. Exactly. No one else can, you're, without you're, that production can do it. I'm sorry. It, it's right. So uh, I don't like it anyway because I think everyone should try to play the same standard, but you you can get away with being soft in your D zone if you're an absolute monster offensively. You're not. And I think when you watch some of these other teams with their high-end skill, they're all impactful and make a difference. Yep. In a game-to-game basis, period-to-period, they get out there and they're a threat, and we don't have that. There's no top end on this team, fellas. If you need a goal, like who can you write down in ink for 30? Nobody. No one. No, like 25 even? Who's a guarantee for 25? The guy who has six NHL games under his belt is your biggest scoring threat. And the guy standing on your fourth lines outplayed your $17.5 million double down combo. The fourth line like, sorry, gave, you, gave you the most yesterday. If you're confused with, like, oh, geez, Sharon Govis must be playing well. He's, he's, he's like, he's in the same box as Kadri and Huberto right now. And that is not a good look for those two guys. That line, they. They shuffled the lines up. You come Achieved, off of a yeah. loss. And Kadri, Huberto, and Dubé were put together, each of them finishing minus four. For those of you that care about plus minus, some of you don't. But my when you're, it's minus four, you better care. It's telling you a little bit of something. Yeah, we got better stats and plus minus in the pin report, and it's the same story. It's uh so what one of the things that Daryl did last year is he put these cats together because they both seem to almost just drag down the line they're on they're not making people better around them it's even worse it's like it's to the detriment of the people who play with them so daryl's like all right i'm putting these assholes together and like husk is already there we're a weekend 
Like we're well, sorry, we're, we're seven games in. Six interesting games in. you bring up the coaches because I brought up the boom last night on Afterburner. Where's Huska's head? And hear me out. New coach, all positive. Mm-hmm. We're going to have fun. It's good. We're changing the mood. The dark cloud has left the building. We are we are a positive group, and we're, we want to hear the players' voices, and we want to have their – take their – Input and use it to our advantage and make them feel blah blah. blah. Huska knows he can't be a, a hard ass because that's what they just got rid of and quit on. Now what? Like, when's Huska get to a point where it's like, well, I get it. I got to bring the hammer down. I have to I'm let just... him know it's not acceptable. How do you? Uh, and then all of a sudden, oh, it's Mister Negative. I can't play for this guy. He's too negative. He's not. Huska is now in a shitty spot, and I don't know what he's going to do about it. Well, to be fair, it's a first-time head coach. It's a first-time NHL GM. It's a first-time NHL guy running a power play that went at 10% on the road trip. Like, There's not a lot of job experience you can lean on that's similar to this. Uh, We like all these people. We want them to do well, but what, what can they lean on at this point? It's tough. Yeah. If you're a rookie head coach, how do you finesse this? I know they're, I believe they're practicing today. This is not an off day for the team. It's get to the rink and we need to get some, we got to get some work in because you play tomorrow, 745 weird start against the Rangers. Then it's the 32 Lewis. teams in one day, yeah. you know, and then, red zone thing. So it's a 740 start. Sorry, go ahead. And then the, uh, the Oilers. So you've got three games coming up this week. Not a lot of time to to get to get any work done and they look like a team that needs a lot of work they need to to work on some things for sure it definitely looks like a team that needs to practice hey guys thanks for watching be sure to check out more of our content right here on the flames nation youtube page we had a bunch of great long form interviews you can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio and of course if you want more writing or merchandise stuff flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca appreciate you watching